So I would like to request Mr. Kiran Khalap to please come up on stage. To create is to unify. Let us enjoy his company. So Kiran, to begin with, organic chemistry. So what is the chemistry between chemistry, advertising, creativity, and branding? What is the chemistry what between is the link? this? Do I have to answer your questions as fast as you ask them? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to increase the speed? <laughs> <laughs> so the common link is writing. <clears throat> the common link is writing. I mean, uh, writing is as easy as breathing for me. So I was published even while I was in school and college. So um, when I finished those four years teaching and being a housemaster in Banaras, both my parents were ill. One had cancer, one had Parkinson's, so I had to come back. And therefore then I could have done one of two professions. One was journalism because I could write and one was advertising because my father was one of India's best commercial artists. So I was exposed to art from my childhood. Therefore, I thought advertising was an even better profession for me. That's how I ended up in advertising. So you're back to your teaching years because branding is nothing but teaching your clients about their brands which they don't know. Not, not all of them, but yes, most. Uh, it is, it is a, a fairly recent discipline and therefore, there is a lot of education involved. There is a lot of uh, overhang, hangover from the days of branding when branding was basically about product branding. So when you use the word brands, you normally think about uh, Procter & Gamble or Unilever who are talking about product brands. They are selling a detergent or a blade or a you know, diaper. But if you look at today, if you look at his brand, which is online, uh, none of those rules apply. Or if you look at a corporate brand, you have Ram who's doing Edelweiss. It's a corporate brand, right? It's not just about selling insurance. It is also about Edelweiss Foundation. It is about many things. So those rules do not apply. And therefore, there is a lot of education that we need to do. So ideas create and uh, values protect. Is that your line? Yes. For Edelweiss? Yes. It's a very powerful statement. How do you arrive at these statements? Do you look at the profile of the person who owns the organization? Do you look at the activity of the organization? How do you come with such statements? <laughs> the, <laughs> the, this is online, is it? This is live. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to avoid the real story. <laughs> okay, tell a beautiful lie. Yeah. <laughs> So no, the uh, Rashish, who is a good friend of mine, he had some line in his mind. And I said, Rashish, this is not how it works. It is not about a line. So you became a teacher again? Yeah, it's not about a line. It is about finding out the unchanging idea behind your organization. And here is, there are eight questions. We'll do the analysis. We'll go out. We'll talk to other people. So at the end of it, I must admit, he really appreciated. His exact statement was, this was like Satori. It is like the Japanese enlightenment experience. And then we said, okay, now that we have put it down, that what is Edelweiss about? That we will create wealth through creativity and we will guard it through values. What is the simplest and the most memorable expression of this belief? Which was ideas create, values protect. To create is to unite. How do you explain that? That's a statement which you really love. I really love that. Uh, see, what, what is happening is when you use the word, if you transit from creativity to brand, from brand to creativity, the normal understanding of creativity is restricted to talent. Uh, somebody can sing well, somebody can draw well. So you say that's a creative person. But to create is to unite, expands that meaning of creativity to a much higher level. So, uh, the biggest saint on earth, whether it is the Buddha or the Christ, they did not build any bridges. They did not create airports. They did not fly rockets. But they brought people together. That, to me, is the highest level of creativity. Where does brand communication extend to? Does it uh, culminate only till the time that you create a good name, 
and a good statement, a good color combination, and a logo? Or does brand communication go way beyond that? And how way beyond that should it go? Actually, brand communication now has a very restricted role because all of us are producers of communication. We all have mobile phones, and we shoot pictures and talk about brands more than brands talk about themselves. So currently, what we say is a brand is what a brand does. It is the brand's behavior that decides what the brand stands for rather than what the brand says. So if you take Zara as the only retail brand that uh, made profits in India, first year of operations, valuation worth, I think, 8 billion US, it has never invested in a single uh, dollar in communication. What is the right balance? A bad product with a good brand, a good brand with a bad product, or both good? How do you strike that balance? No, there is no, that imbalance is not allowed any longer. The customers reject it. Yeah. They read so through it. Not, not only do, is the imbalance not allowed, any, even the slightest uh, lack of authenticity is latched on to. So, I don't know if you know, uh, Gap, which is a brand in the US, changed their logo. They had to change it back in seven days. Tropicana changed their packaging. They had to change back in three months. They lost 30 million US in three months. For an entrepreneur, when you become a consultant for branding, do you restrict yourself only to creating the brand for the organization or do you also extend your services to make sure that there is a clear-cut alignment between the team of the organization and the brand? That's the ideal scenario. And you make sure you do that? Yes, that is if they allow us. There are some who say, um, this is fine. I just wanted you to create this logo and this line, but don't do this alignment. There are some who are saying, okay, go through all the steps of alignment. So hiring and induction, rewards and deterrence, leadership behavior, all of that all adds up to the brand. When you engage a customer, there is a customer who might uh, not align to your thoughts or ideas, or you think he might not implement all your suggestions. In that scenario, what do you do? There is, I don't think we can, you can force. You adapt to them or? No, you can't force. I, I don't think you can force your wife to do whatever you want her to do. No. <laughs> In the case of wife, it is the other way around. She can force us to. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. So I don't think I want to be arrogant enough to say I will change everything. You explain that, look, here are the clear benefits. You will have less attrition if we, if you align the behavior of the company to the values, you'll have less attrition. Less attrition means 16% less loss of whatever revenue and so on and so forth. So you have got some fantastic team. I have been interacting with some of them. Lovely team, very talented, very knowledgeable, hands-on, very well experienced. How do you bring talent onto your board? Because your business is all about creativity. It's not about 2,000 employees. It's about 20 people yeah. trying to do something which will be impacting 20 lakh people in terms of customers and their employees. So how do you bring talent on board? So one of the things we say everybody uses is a word called brand loyalty. So I think it's not just about customers being loyal to the brand. The brand has to be loyal to itself. So we are probably one of the few consultants in India that has uh, parted company amicably, but parted company with somebody as big as a Unilever or Aditya Birla group, because our values didn't match. When you do that, you, there is a certain kind of person who is attracted to your business. They say, I like the fact that you are so fiercely independent, that you respect your people so much, that you will lose money, but not lose self-respect. That's how you attract talent. The success of any organization is the quality of people that they have, and definitely so in terms of creativity as a business model, which is branding all about. In such a scenario, the team that you have, how do you make sure that they perform the way you want to? So how do you train them? As far as entrepreneurs are concerned, we always have a challenge in all sectors of uh, recruitment. That is recruitment, training, retraining, and retaining. So how do you do that in, that, uh, in your organization? Because it is high talented jobs. Some of the, uh, there are certain, um, myths that people have. So you, you, uh, you have the sense that to retain them, you need greater money, then you need to um, 
give them fancy holidays. The single most important attribute worldwide for any organization for retention is pride. So where does pride come from? Pride comes from their own work, their own challenges, how all of us work together, what we achieve, what we don't achieve. Um, there is one, one government organization in India that outperforms every other government organization. Which one is that? I will say Maharashtra. It's ISRO, right? ISRO. 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 Okay. okay. Space, space research. Space research. They have sent organization something to government. Government organization. So they have sent somebody to Mars at the cost of a rickshaw or whatever. And if you ask them why, how is this possible? First, of course, politicians are not too interested in space. Therefore, they are left alone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry? There are no voters in this. And there is no real estate to build anything there. Uh, so there they said that when we failed the first time, rocket went up and came down, the boss... Uh, uh, went and told the guy who was in charge, you will not attend the press conference. I will. You go home and relax. I will take all blame. Do you, what do you think this guy will do after that? He'll give his life for him. Forever. Forever. Absolutely. So that sense of pride, what do you do, what you don't do, I think that is, of course, you have to pay enough and all of that. So you are an employee and now you are an employer. What were you better at? So I have uh, my, I have themes in my life. Uh, one big theme which is because of my father and because of the three or four big influences in advertising is responsibility and not fear. I'm not afraid of anything, but I'm very ashamed if I do not live up to my responsibility. That is exactly what I do for my uh, employees. So the whole attempt is to give them greater and greater responsibility. And he said, if you fail, don't worry. I'm anyway pitching it much higher than you can. And if you succeed, fantastic. You would have grown at a supersonic speed. So as an entrepreneur, you strongly believe in personality development of yourself also. And that begins with you for a personal workout and also meditation, which you religiously and rigorously <laughs> do every morning for two hours. How does that help you? As an entrepreneur, how will meditation help you? There is enough data. I mean, if you read uh, current data, whether it is Google, whether it is all the big companies in the world, they have uh, mindfulness exercises for everyone. So uh, all these companies practice mindfulness. And it leads to productivity. It leads to less friction. So every Tuesday when we have our weekly meetings, we have a 10-minute meditation session. And it... It's the example I give you when, you when you are watching a cricket match and you want to make a decision about whether the, go, the batsman is out or not out. What is it that we do? We slow it down. Because we slow it down, you're able to see it clearer, which is what meditation does. It slows you down, therefore you're able to see very clearly where anger or irritation or frustration has come up from. That is the... And what is your stress buster? Rock climbing? Yes. Trekking? That's your stress buster? Yes. You get ideas there? Oh, tons. Old monk also helps. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the sacrifice made tonight. <laughs> so old monk helps after you climb the rock or old monk helps without the rock also? <laughs> both ways. Both and ways. on the rocks also? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never on the rocks. <laughs> Excellent. So whenever you get a good new client, next day you're on some rock. Yeah. No, I, 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 I think it is, uh, it is to do with uh, uh, losing this very strong sense of ego or self. Once that is broken up a bit and you know you don't take yourself too seriously creativity at its finest would be like water there would be no resistance you would be able to flow around anything i do a session called synectics which is a session of group thinking and i proudly say that 
uh, using that method, you can solve any problem on Earth. But you have to find a way of defining the problem well, and then you can find a way of using the group's uh, ability to find a solution. Why do always creative people delay the output and justify it for quality? <laughs> <laughs> habit. So that this is this is a habit. So somebody has told them, their boss has told them that you have to go to Khandala, stare in the mist, have a couple of drinks, and then the idea will come. <laughs> now I have I have somebody who is the opposite. He, he passed away. Nalesh Patil, he was, uh, he was with us right from the beginning, from 1999 to 2016. He was Maharashtra's best nature poet. He had, he had a beautiful voice, he could sing in, he had sung in 120 towns. Nalesh used to sit with an alarm clock. When you briefed him, he said, just set the time, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, set the time and I'll give you the ideas. Seriously? Seriously. Can we buy that clock for you? <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I still remember I got a call. I was on vacation. But at that speed, he'll be very economical also. <laughs> he, is, he was phenomenal. He was prolix. Very, very prolific. So I remember there was a client who called me. I think we were doing Reliance Retail. And uh, this gentleman called me and said, you know, fabulous strategy work. But I'm meeting the board. Uh, this evening and uh, if you could give brand names for each of those so there were 13 verticals that we had done can you give brand names for all of them so I said uh, okay office closed it's a Sunday I said okay let me try Nalesh gave 25 brand names in 15 minutes Wow. wow. that's wow. what I mean by how many of them work it doesn't matter. He was going to show them as examples. Okay. That if this is a strategy, this is the kind of brand name. That is what I mean by, in its finest sense, creativity will be like water. It will not know barriers. These people who sit and say, I will deliver it tomorrow, are aane rai, aane rai, as if it's some, you know, as if you're sitting on the pot in the morning. <laughs> they are not the ideal creative people. And if ideas come, they will start gifting pots to all creative people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, Kiran, when you come up with a brand idea, when you uh, think about a brand idea for a customer, who validates that? Do you have a team which validates your own ideas for branding? First, the brand idea does not emerge out of us. The brand it idea is from the client. already inside you. That's why you all it's run your, a long process with the client. It is, in your, it is in your belief system. There are things which you do, whether for VNCT Ventures or for White Villas, which you will not stop doing irrespective of what I call your brand. Correct? Right. You will right. never cheat. So I can call your brand whatever you want. But the fact that you will never cheat is part of that brand. So first, the brand definition emerges from your mind and heart. And it gets validated from the outside. So people who have bought White Villas, if I go and ask them, what do you think about this brand? They'll tell you. 200 rupiah bola tha, 200 rupiah hi liya. Or marble bola tha, marble hi liya. As opposed to somebody else. So it gets validated by your behavior, by the person who's interacting with you. How do you validate your customer's expectations com compared to what he's providing as a service provider or a product provider? You, you do that before do you, you build the brand. you validate the customer? Yes, we, we, we ask the customer their expectations and make sure we tell the brand that, listen, this is the expectation. Then if you cannot uh, fulfill that expectation, you are going to have a problem. So whenever you initiate a process for branding with a client, you first study the client's requirements, his business model, his team, his culture, his expectations, his game plan, his future ambition, and then you start defining the brand, or how does it happen? Correct. So all of this leads to the definition of the brand. Then that, what does the brand that consultant definition, do? That, that definition, no, I have arrived at that definition after studying all of this. Okay. That definition is not ready-made in anybody's mind. So ideas create values protect wasn't in his mind in that form. 
There were belief systems. Out of all of that, I have come to this particular direction. That, that direction or versions of that direction, you take out to the outside world, people who deal with you, and ask them which of these directions resonates with you, which of these directions is most relevant to you for the next five years, next 10 years. That's how it happens. Uh, like all of us, you're an entrepreneur, and like all of us, you also face competition. How do you handle competition? We don't uh, define competition. You I, don't face it or you ignore it? We ign not just ignore it. One of the things that is happening, if you look at all businesses, competition is coming from unexpected sources. So we created Brand Meru. Doing brilliantly, worked with them for three years, along comes Uber with a totally different brand model. Totally different business model, sorry, not brand model. Totally different business model. It is not hampered by government rules. So. Till day before yesterday, Kali Pili was his competition. Today it is suddenly Ola or Uber. This is happening very rapidly because technology is facilitating this. So there is no point in saying, this is what I'm doing, this is what competition is doing, and therefore let me adapt. By the time you have adapted, somebody else has done something totally different. Uh, friends, one of the towering jobs that uh, our friend Kiran has done is the Aadhaar card. And Aadhaar card is the world's biggest database, digital database. Biometric database. Biometric database. I think it is 10 times bigger than the database that FBI has. Yes. Right? FBI is 10 crores. This is 125 crores. This is 125 crores. It's incredible so you achievement. Are, you, that's an incredible achievement uh, for the government, definitely for us. It is because of you that you are involved. You are named as the chairman of such an organization. How easy or difficult it is to satisfy the needs of a government, that to central so, government. So let's be very Do they clear. listen to you as a brand uh, expert? No. My, uh, let, let us define the role, because it, currently the way you made it, it looks like I was Nandan Nilekadi. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was in charge of a committee that you had- baptized his child, <laughs> no? Adhar. Yes. So he uh, called up and said, I had worked with him on Infosys, and he called up and said that, look, this UIDA sounds like an intrauterine device. <laughs> you have to give it a proper brand name. So the brand name came from a farmer in Rajasthan. And it's the only word which means the same thing in Sanskrit-based languages and in Tamil. Normally, the words are different. So we adopted that as the brand name. We created a committee that created the communication strategy. It was very strict. We had three months, we created the communication strategy created a book, printed that book, gave that book to all the communication and facilitating agencies that were going to work with the government, put an extract on the website and got 2,500 logos. My job was to make sure that out of those 2,500 logos, I brought it all down to five or six, and then they chose one. How easy or how difficult was it? Because it was facilitated by him. There was another extremely sterling gentleman called Arish Sharma was till recently, till October, the uh, head of TRI, okay. who was phenomenal. I mean, see, one of the things that the government people uh, have as a virtue, which we don't have as entrepreneurs, is they are not scared of scale. Okay. It's 100, is okay, 100 crores is nothing for them. 50 crores is nothing for them. We, we can't even think of those kind of numbers. He was so dedicated to that task. He said, Kiran, I'm going to learn coding. Because without, if I don't learn coding, I won't know what this damn number is going to do. So Kiran, what is your message to entrepreneurs as far as brand and branding and communication is concerned? There, there is no message. The one word message is authenticity. What is happening around the world, not just in India, around the world is if you are not authentic, if there is a gap between you as a human being and you as an entrepreneur, if there is a gap between what you say and what you do, you will get found out and your brand will die very fast. Please remember the difference between a brand and a human being. Human beings have a expiry date. Brands don't. Fantastic. The world's oldest brand of beer is Weinstephan. It is 1,000 years old. Wow. We there was manage, beer 1,000 years back? Yes. We, uh, we manage a brand called Eternal Maywad, which is 1,400 years old. 
So wow. brands are long, long lasting, eternal Mewad. It is the king of Mewad, the Maharana of Mewad. Fantastic. Before I open uh, the house for questions, uh, one last question. What excites Kiran Khanna? Other than old mom. <laughs> Anna Rock. Silence, maybe. <laughs> no, no, that's why, that's why I went silent, no? <laughs> Thank you, Kiran. Thank you. That was amazing. Friends, five questions. Five questions. Excellent, Kiran. We enjoyed Thank it you. thoroughly. Yes, Sumit. Five quick questions so that we can move to the next session. Sir, what is the spider, spider story? Yeah. Uh, the, Kiran Khalapi. Uh, yeah, it's called Thelkatopis Kiran Khalapi. Uh, there is a young, one of the best uh, arachnologists. Arachnology is a guy who studies spiders. Uh, he is a friend of my wife. My wife is heavily into um, looking after stray dogs and looking after the tigers in Central Asia. And she, she, he is a friend. The way you recognize a spider is by dissecting the spider. And the spider is so tiny. So you freeze it and you dissect it and you look at its private parts and photograph them. That's how you identify the spider. So. When I heard about this, I bought him a microscope which could shoot the pictures as he was dissecting them and stored them in the PC. This was so valuable for him. He said that when I find a new spider, I will name it after you. So there is one named after me, one named after my wife. Yes, Samir. Hi, uh, Kiran. from the same industry. Uh, wonderful I'll to be careful, you. yeah. <laughs> So uh, you said uh, very correctly that the entire rules of advertising are changing rapidly now. Uh, and we see that as the new consumer base is emerging, we see every five years the entire generation is changing. I mean, there's a generation gap every five, six years nowadays. The consumers are thinking extremely differently. Now I want to know, uh, there was time when creative guys used to be there with the agency for 15 years, 20 years. Now when I look at an external creative guy, I find a 30-year-old guy is also very old for the kind of creativity that is required now. So how do you manage this kind of uh, challenges? How do I manage? Uh, uh, getting creatives. Now, now, there used to be time when a creative guy used to join an agency uh, uh, as an art person and he used to be there for 30 years, 20 years and he used to still turn out good creatives. Wherein that doesn't help anymore. I mean, you look at the newer brands who are uh, so vibrant that, uh, that a 40-year guy will never be able to come out with something like that. So, uh, that, so that's there are two questions in your question, if you right. don't mind. Sure. One is, uh, when we define a brand, we're saying there are two parts to any brand. There is an unchanging part and there is a changing part. And the best example of that, the example I give is James Bond. Six actors have played James Bond. Anybody remembers the first one? Shao Kondri used to smoke, used to womanize, and used to drink a lot of dry martini. The latest guy, Daniel Craig, does not smoke, weeps for his girlfriend, and doesn't know what he's drinking. <laughs> Correct? But he's still James Bond. The music hasn't changed. James Bond has to be 37 years old because he was an ex-commander in the Navy. So there will be some parts of a brand which change over time because society changes and competition changes and consumer changes. But if everything about a brand changes, there will be no brand. Now, once you understand this principle, the people whom you hire must be able to understand that this is what they are doing towards. So the brand has not changed, but the customer is not on TV, not reading newspapers. The customer is only on digital, in which case either this creative person is able to adapt an idea to that medium or I have to find a new person who can adapt the idea to that medium. That's the way you do it. Fantastic. Lovely. That was excellent. Yes, next. Hi, RP. She's so, again from your acting. I know. This is very scary. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, we are not your competition. We are going to learn from you. That is what every big player says. <laughs> no, no, no. We are, uh, it's, it's growing. Okay, I love your sense of humor, sir. Thank you. And uh, my, my 
Lovely. Okay. Um, each brand has to be distinctive, has to be different. That is what makes a brand stand out. How do you enable that uh, newness or that creativity? How to sharpen that creativity every time with every different project or every different brand you work with? What do you and your team does? As I said, that a lot of it emerges from the person who owns the brand. If you listen to stories about, we were discussing Oyo. How did Oyo come about? He did not get a room to stay one night. He slept under a staircase. And he said, okay, from now I will think of an idea where nobody ever has to face this. So there are people who are obsessed with this kind of a starting point. Those starting points already exist. I met a youngster who was like, you know, that rancho from Three Idiots. He said, my, uh, my father is a lower division uh, railway clerk. We are three brothers and my mother was always in the kitchen and I felt so sad that her eyes always streaming because she has to make tea and there's no gas and all. And in class eight, he created this little box in which there are three containers, water, milk, tea and sugar, and he arranged an alarm clock mechanism to make tea. His starting point was looking at a mother and feeling sad. So the brand starting point is in the brand owner's mind and heart. You have to extract it, articulate it, find it, then make sure that it can be scaled up. Fantastic, yes. Sidhu. Good evening, sir. Uh, what are some creative parameters of uh, putting uh, discipline in your employees in a way that you don't suffocate them and also in a way that they perform? So, as I said, you have to understand, just as you have to understand customer, you have to understand employee. So, for instance, most employees, the millennials by far, do not want the responsibility of time. So in my office, you can come in whatever time you want, so long as you fix the time. So you say, I will arrive at 10.30 every day, or I will work from home thrice a week. It's fine, you stick to that. Most millennials want to have more than one career. So it's fine, you say, go ahead and have, on Fridays, come to the office, but if you want to do baking, do baking. So I'll have to adapt to them rather than me, them adapting to my brand. That's a fantastic point for entrepreneurs. Fantastic point. Yes, Ibrahim. So how do you advise early stage companies which are in high growth? And what is the you know, importance of their brand incorporation at a very early stage? So how do you, you know, advise such sort of companies? So if you look at the history of branding, for instance, uh, before World War II, uh, Germany and England, after World War II, US, then Japan, then Korea, then China, you realize it is all to do with the financial prowess of that nation. There is a, a website called uh, um, Map.org, or I forget, World Map, World Mappers Org, or some such thing, which shows maps from the past, and it shows the map according to GDP. So India was like a big laddu before the English came. It was 28% of the world GDP. When the English left, it was 1.7, right? You can see it on those maps, worldmapper.org. So brands need a nation that has prowess, but it needs another thing, which is discipline, which is what we Indians don't have. So you, even if I give him a logo and ask somebody to print this, that Printer is going to thoda teda hoya to kya hua? Oh, lal ke bandle mein orange dala to kya hua? This is our nation. So, the entire discipline of branding that if I am a brand, there are certain things I will do and certain things I will not do. If you don't do that, that in that scaling up, you are going to lose a lot. Fantastic. That's the last question. Shri. Yeah. Sir, most of them are here are entrepreneurs in this crowd. Most of them are entrepreneurs here. Would like to know from your advice side, from your experience, myth versus reality in the brand, ethical versus unethical practices through the brand, or when you talk about the customer credibility and loyalty, little bit input to that. 
to that audience so that most of them are having their brand i know that the which is what i said if there was one word it would be authenticity yeah so but if yes is there any specific indian culture which is moving towards is there any uh, dna of indians how to create a brand on it because india is always fascinated about english brands uh, in fact yesterday when i was interacting with the student 99% people doesn't know mitashi is the brand coming from kotkopur west but when the people purchase the product they are happy when they come to know mitashi from kotkopur i mean <laughs> and at the same time another extreme ifb indian fine blends many people doesn't know it's an indian brand which one ifb indian fine blends indian fine blends for, so for example i can i can give you hundreds of brand like this and no, people no. goes to astrologer for brand nothing wrong even i do believe astrology but uh, i mean where we are marching is there any indian way of doing something creative part but is patanjali is larger than unilever true so it's an indian brand yeah that's the uh, input to the uh, audience i want to know from you if, if they are creating a brand what they should march towards are keeping some english names you know I'm alan uh, soli louis puli no. van hussein is coming from is it related, to, is it related to, brand to brand name to the name brand name english okay. name india what name. talk about culture okay. what identity is the, what is the oh. what is the meaning of lakme what is the meaning of the brand name lakme goddess lakshmi yeah what is the meaning of the brand name ikea ikea ikea, IKEA. the four uh, letters england clembert and uh, the that's his surname that's, that's his name and surname you don't know meru is doing fine meru is an indian name we have created a brand in pune called ishanya ishanya is north east yeah that's a mall in pune yeah okay. so Location. what is the question the, if the question is he wants the will eth will english ethnic name indian name will ethnic names give you a lower chance of success yes and will but if you don't know the meaning what will you do what is the meaning of nokia who knows nokia is a small furry animal but you didn't know that so if you have a brand name which is hanuman now everybody knows hanuman and there are specific associations with hanuman therefore if your brand is not about hanuman characteristics if it's not about building body then it's a long brand name to give but will ethnic non ethnic is not at all true we don't even know the meanings 90% of the people don't know what lux means 100% of the people don't know what nike means what does nike mean it is the greek goddess of victory so we this is untrue that people will react to a brand name just blindly which is the what's this brand of food that we have Lux is light. Light. Lux means light in Latin. So there are enough Indian brands which are doing fine. What is parachute? What is really? What is parachute got to do with oil? For God's sake. <laughs> postmen never go inside kitchens, but you have a postman in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So I think uh, with that we conclude the session. Kiran, that was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was brilliant. I would like to request Vivek Mendonca, again a big brand name in India, Vivek Mendonca, to come up and hand over a plaque. I would like to request Nitin Munoth, who sports a very powerfully branded moustache. He has got more hair on his moustache than people on their head. <laughs> we are proud to give uh, Mr. Kiran Kil uh, Kilap his uh, vision. Uh, we are the optician yes. behind uh, his vision. <laughs> Advertising. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>